Welcome to Thursday's solo episode. I am not alone. Um, today is a snow day. Yesterday was a PA day. We did not know this. We had everything packed up, ready to go for school on Monday because this holiday has dragged on forever. And I think it's because Christmas was on a Monday and a Tuesday, like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So they went to school right up until Christmas. And then there was no like lead up excitement, anticipation about Christmas because it just happened instantly once school was out. And then Christmas happened and then it was like all this time off. So like Christmas already happened. I ripped down all the decorations on the Christmas tree the boxing day, the day after Christmas. And then it just like dragged on forever. And we're still like, I'm still on holidays, guys. Okay. As I record this, it's Tuesday. Um, let's pray that by the time you're listening to this on Thursday, hopefully, because you should be listening as soon as it comes out. I'm just kidding. Um, that my life is somewhat back to normal. I, you know, when you're out of routine, like you travel or something and it's fun at first and then you're like, oh my God, I need structure and I need routine in my life. That is how I feel. I'm just, and the past two nights I've been like, okay, tomorrow's the day. I'm gonna, you know, put, take out my little weekly calendar that I do every Monday morning. I'm gonna schedule my whole week and make plans and look at my calendar and just be like on the ball. No, didn't happen. And then last night it was the same thing. I was like, okay, here we go. Tomorrow, tomorrow. And I had a massage booked today because I don't know how I'm sleeping. I need to videotape myself sleeping. I wake up with a crazy kink in my neck so much so that I can barely turn my head to the side. And I feel like it's been a sore neck for so long that now it's just starting to get more of a serious issue. So I booked two massages for the next few weeks because I like to go, if there's something really bothering me, I like to go a few times like close together to try and get rid of it. And I called my massage therapist this morning. I was like, Milo's school is canceled. Like I can either bring him to the appointment and he can sit there and hopefully just watch his tablet or we can reschedule. And she was like, it's totally up to you. So I rescheduled to Thursday, but yeah, it's just, I'm really looking forward to regular life. And to be honest, all I can think of is as soon as we go back to school, everyone is going to have some kind of illness because they've been with family and traveling and all that kind of stuff over the holidays. And then we're going to be just back at home sick at any moment. So that's what I keep thinking. I'm like, it's going to get back to normal and then we're probably going to be back at home. But anyways, these are things that we cannot control, right? Yes. Um, it's funny because my husband was saying that for the snow day, they they wanted us to log in to a Google Meet thing. I guess they had all this kind of stuff in place when it was the pandemic and people were in quarantine. So he's like, yeah, you're supposed to log into this Google Meet thing at 9 a.m. and then at 3 p.m. And I was like, what? So I missed it at 9 a.m. Like I'm just, when plans get turned upside down, like I was making my oatmeal, I'm trying to make his breakfast, I'm I'm like, I'm not logging into something at 9 a.m. So I missed the 9 a.m. one. And as I was setting up to record this podcast, I'm like, oh, great, it's three. Like, I didn't log into that one either. I, I have no idea what it's for. I can't imagine they do anything that important, but we shall see. Um, puzzles and Legos are my new identity, and it's literally all I want to do in life. For so long, I would build Lego. Like Milo and I would get these massive Legos, like the Home Alone house. We currently have Bowser's Castle that we need to build. Legos are expensive. It's an expensive hobby, but it's so rewarding. Like 
opening the bag, laying out the pieces, following the instructions, finishing a structure. But the issue is once you finish a structure, it's really hard to keep it together, like keep it put together and then store it somehow. And the smaller ones, Milo loves to build them and then break them apart and then rebuild them and break them apart. And that's fine. Like you just throw the pieces in a Ziploc bag or whatever with the instructions and you can do that. Keep it separate from the other ones. But over the years, all of our Lego pieces from all of our sets, like we had so many sets, are all mixed up. So I feel like I would pay someone a lot of money to go through and separate out all the sets so that we could rebuild them and display them somehow. My goal is to get shelving. I measured in his room. So beside the closet where the fish tank used to be, RIP fish, um, you can fit a regular sized Billy bookcase and then the narrow one all like side by side. Um, secure them to the wall obviously so they don't fall and then just like fill it with lego structures that's what I would love to do but every time I go on Ikea and make a cart of things to be delivered it's like unavailable for delivery and then I look up which stores it's available at and it's like there's certain things available at like different stores it's literally rocket science to try and figure out a full purchase from Ikea, like where you can get it from and if it's available. So anyways, um, and then we also are like, can we go as a family to Ikea or do we have to take out the car seat? Now you have to look at the size of the boxes that you have to pick up. Is it going to fit in the car with all of us in the car? It's like a whole, it's literally rocket science to shop at Ikea. Um, Anywho, We've been doing puzzles. We've been doing Legos. I've actually been watching things on TV, which I didn't know I missed doing that so much. But I find myself getting sucked into doing work stuff in the evenings. And even if it's like there's something on the TV, it's like I'm not really paying attention. I pick up my phone every like five minutes. I, you know what I mean? It's not the same. And the last few nights when I have actually put my phone away and just been engaged in something on TV. My husband and I watched Hell Camp, which is about those wilderness therapy camps that kids were sent to and are still sent to. That's actually a topic that I want to talk about on Insufferable with my sister. I want her to watch it and I want to do some research and see what is still out there and how they're run and if there's any other news that has come out about those camps that's like the kind of camp that Paris Hilton got sent to if you guys watched her documentary that was also really good um but yeah actually watching things the other night the Golden Globes came on and I was like oh my god I haven't watched an award show in so long and I used to love like that was my like that was who I was as a person was somebody that was obsessed with award shows music award shows, movie award shows, whatever it is. I just loved them. And I haven't seen one in so long. And I feel like COVID also kind of messed that up because for a year or so, like there was nothing like that on. So I noticed that the Golden Globes were on, watched it, was so entertained. I ended up recording the end of it because I couldn't stay awake, but so good. Like I love award shows. Um, and just as a note, on Sunday, I started doing this seven day, um, not a program, but just like a little seven day education learning community thing with the period lab, Miranda, she's been on the podcast before her account on Instagram is the period lab. I am learning so much about our cycles and the different phases and what happens to the hormones in those phases, how to eat to help balance your hormones and like offset different symptoms. And if you look at some of the symptoms that are common in the different phases of a menstrual cycle, 
I am literally like a textbook example of what people might experience. The week before my period, I'm like, okay, I actually don't know. I need to look further into this and like actually look at my, what I'm like during these phases. But I remember yesterday, one of the options was apathy. I was on my, I use the flow app, not the paid version, just the free version to, to kind of track symptoms and stuff. And just like throughout the day, like open it up and be like, Hmm, like what am I experiencing today? And it's interesting, but one of the things was apathy. And I was like, I think that's what I feel like. I don't feel depressed. I don't feel necessarily like sad. I'm just kind of like, uh, like questioning everything. Like, why am I even doing this? Like, why am I having a podcast? Why am I posting on social media? Like everything sucks. Like nothing, you know what I mean? Like it's weird. And so I looked up the definition of apathy. That's literally me a couple days into my period. I'm the most apathetic person. I'm just like a blob, like existing. Um, So I thought that was interesting. So it's, I feel like for a couple years or like a year at least, I was just living through all these things, not even realizing what was happening. But now it all makes so much sense. And it's so bang on. Like, during my period, I just want to like lay low. Yesterday, I went to a yin yoga class, which was like, oh my God, I needed it considering this holiday break has been like nine years long. Just like in a quiet, dark room, hot candles, stretching. It was heavenly. Um, Yeah. And like the different workouts that you do in the different phases, it's just so interesting. And I'm going to really try to keep up with that, keep up with the protein and the fiber and all that stuff. So I've been sharing quite a bit on Instagram, but we'll see. Maybe I'll, once I actually figure stuff out and lay it out, maybe I'll do an episode all about that stuff because you guys seem to be interested in that. (laughs) Um, Today, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about, because all of a sudden it's in the news constantly, is sleep divorce. Like, hello, we were talking about this on the mom room a long ass time ago, like years, I would say. Sleep divorce. When Cameron Diaz put out the, there was an article about how she said we need to normalize sleeping in separate beds. I was like shocked at how many people sent that to me over and over and over. Like every single DM I opened, every text message, it was like somebody sending me that article or one of the articles. I feel like every single media outlet wrote about Cameron Diaz saying that. Um, also, I just came across an article about Carson Daly and his wife saying they have some, they have a couple little girls or three young kids, I think. And they were you know, there was this article about how they sleep separately. Apparently, because I looked this up, the Beckhams, so Victoria and David Beckham, have separate wings of the house. That's a dream. My dream is like, I want my own little condo. I so miss just being a person that lives by themselves in a condo. It's so manageable. You know, you have a small living area. You can keep it clean. You can keep it organized. You don't have a ton of stuff. You don't have outdoor stuff. Like you don't have to worry about like shoveling or, you know, upkeep of anything. It's just like such a simple life. And this is what I always say to my husband. Like it's very common for families in Europe and maybe in big cities as well. But even like, I don't think it's as common, like definitely in Europe, It's so common for families to live in small condos. That's just how they live. And my husband's like, yeah, but it's different. And I'm like, I know it's different, but imagine how, like there's ups and downs to both. Like having, in in my mind, I'm like, why do we have this house? 
we're three people. We could literally live in a condo if Bubbles wasn't such a bitch and barked at everything. But I always think about that life where I was just living by myself in a small condo. You could vacuum the whole thing in 10 minutes. Just zippity do, you know? Anyways, um, no shoveling. Like I just shoveled today. My back is like broken. Anyway, back to my dream. That's what I was saying. The Beckham's wings of the house. Living in a condo that had a, like joining doors. You know how sometimes you can get two hotel rooms that are joined? How amazing would that be? Like the best. Um, I do love my husband, but it's like that would just be the best. So I do think that sleep divorce is extremely common. I don't think a lot of people talk about it, but I think people are starting to talk about it a lot more now, obviously, because there's a stigma. And I feel like the older generation especially feels that way because it's so ingrained in us. You know, you get married, you sleep in the same bed with the person. It's like, why? Like, why? Actually, why? It's a luxury to be able to sleep in your own room, I think. Like whether you're a child or an adult, that is a luxury. If you have the space, oh my God, highly recommend. 10 out of 10. So there was this research study that said millennials, which I am a millennial, are the generation that sleeps separately the most from their romantic partners. And their stat is 43%. And then Gen X, which I believe is older than us. I think they said it's the generation after the boomers. I think that's what they said. 33%. And then Gen Z is 28% which I get, like Gen Z, how old would Gen Z be right now? Like, do they live together with their spouses? Because like, even when Pri and I were dating and we were younger, we were probably like the age that Gen Z is in their 20s, right? Or no, because I think Claudia from The Toast is 28 or 26 and she calls herself a millennial, I think. So it's like the younger, younger people. Anyways, of course, you don't have to sleep separately because before before sleep was such a priority and a thing that mattered to me, I would sleep anywhere, literally anywhere. Like took a trip to Australia, sleep in a tent on the beach with like random people I hardly knew. You know, I think back on where I used to sleep, just any old place with a blanket, doesn't matter. Now, once you get older and sleep is not in your control, aka you have kids, it matters so much. You become so fixated on getting good sleep, non-disrupted sleep, that you become extremely high maintenance. At least that's what happened to me. Before, could care less. My husband gets called in the middle of the night, goes out, you know, I used to go to bed. I always go to bed earlier than my husband and he would lay in bed and watch TV and I would just try and sleep and like lay there while he was watching TV. And then eventually he would turn off the TV and we would both go to bed. Now that would never fly. Like I want my alone time to read my book in the dark, get ready for bed, get sleepy, and then close my eyes and go to bed. Now, if he were to waltz in to go to bed at 11 p.m. when I've already fallen asleep, rage. If somebody calls his phone because there's like an emergency at the hospital, rage in the middle of the night. Also, he on like two or three mornings of the week, he gets up really early because he has to be at the hospital really early. Like, no. And I think to our previous life, he would get up super early go in the bathroom, start showering, like all while I'm in bed trying to sleep. And I didn't care. Now that sleep matters, oh, I care. Um, Some of the reasons they listed why couples are choosing sleep divorce, which this will probably 
not come as a surprise. Snoring. Oh, I meant to look up the actual physical, like how snoring happens. I would like to know that. I want to see a video of the inside of someone's throat to understand what is happening. What is happening? Because when people snore, first of all, how can you not hear yourself? How do you not hear yourself? Some people snore so loud and they're sound asleep. And I'm like, how? But if that same level of noise came from somewhere else, they would wake up. So how are you not hearing yourself snore? First of all. Also, people that snore, what is going on? What's happening? Like, is your throat closing in on itself? Is your tongue like getting stuck in the back of your throat and you're like, I will never understand. I literally can't fall asleep when my nose makes like a tiny little like sound. Can't fall asleep. That's why I got a sound machine. Because after I had surgery on my nose, it would make this little sound when I would breathe. Had to start sleeping with a sound machine. So how are you like falling asleep just fine? You know what's really rage inducing? is when I'm watching TV and my husband starts doing his little like snore breathing beside me on the couch. I wake him up and I'm like, go to bed. Go to bed. Ooh, drives me bonkers. Anyways, snoring, huge, huge. Not only does it prevent me from being able to fall asleep, but it raises my cortisol and I'm so irritated that I can't sleep. So, uh, number two, sleep schedules. Again, I go to bed earlier than my husband. I don't want to be sleeping and then he gets into bed and wakes me up. Rage. Sleep apnea, which is like a legit problem. My sister has that. She went and did a sleep study at the hospital. That is scary. You're basically stopping breathing multiple times overnight You have to sleep with a CPAP. I don't know what kind of sound CPAPs make, but I feel like I might like it. Unless you can hear the person snoring through the CPAP. And like, we think CPAPs aren't that big of a deal. Like, it's just like this thing that you put on your face. No, it's a huge deal. I should get my sister to film hers and see just how uncomfortable it is. Like, they had to figure out the proper setting. It was, it like blasts air in your face to keep your breathing or your windpipe whatever it is open so you're not snoring and stopping to breathe but it blasts air so hard into your body that she would wake up with like a distended extended whatever stomach full of air in like so much pain can you imagine I can't even imagine so anyways it's a big deal um restlessness some people just move around a lot when they're sleeping. Some people are light sleepers. That's probably me. And then also a lot of people work shift work. People are on call, that kind of stuff. Um, Somebody mentioned something in one of the articles that was saying, it's not about like people are so focused on like, oh, you're not sleeping with your partner. You're not sleeping with your partner. Like that's, that's not what it's about. It's about getting a good sleep. So if you get a good sleep with your partner. I know so many people are like, oh, I find it hard to sleep when my husband's not in my bed. And I'm like, yeah, I used to be like that too. Before all these other things started, like my husband started snoring and all that kind of stuff. Um, I used to feel the same way. Now I don't. So it's totally dependent on, are you getting a good sleep? I know people who their dogs sleep in the same bed as them and they don't get a good sleep because of the dogs being in the bed. And then when the dogs are not in the bed, like they're with family members or something, shh, 
they're with family members or something, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe how much my sleep is disrupted because of the dog. Sometimes you don't even know until you have the opportunity to sleep by yourself or without a pet or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, it's all about getting a good sleep. And now with all the research on sleep and we know how important it is for so many things, it's freaking important. Like get do what you have to do to get good sleep. There's also been research that shows that improved sleep leads to an improved relationship as well. And that poor sleep results in more conflict between partners, which I totally see that. It's the same as, you know, when we talk about sleep deprivation, when people have small kids, it leads like the it's not just about the sleep training it's about the parents having adequate sleep to be able to function and interact and be the kind of parent they want to be during the day do you know what i'm saying like people always think it sounds selfish that people want to sleep train or get a good sleep when they have little kids and it's like that's how it's supposed supposed to be we just live in a world that doesn't allow that unless we sleep train or do other things so it's like a risk and reward situation um less sleep or inadequate sleep leads to a decrease in positive interactions between partners and there you go same thing with parenting you know you're sleep deprived, it leads to a lot less positive interactions with your child. And I strongly believe that. Um, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine says that one third of couples that live together are in a sleep divorce and do not sleep side by side. Um, one thing I will say is makes travel and obviously this is worth it but one thing is like traveling is really hard because when we went to Switzerland for example we weren't gonna rent or book a whole other hotel room like it was so expensive just to get the one room but now someone that is so used to sleeping by themselves is in a room with their partner that snores it was so annoying i have earplugs they don't work very well and i got really good ones on amazon that like go right inside your ear those are the best ones i have found by far and they still don't block out somebody that's snoring right beside you i don't know where people get off on these like ear oh just wear earplugs like who just wears earplugs and it blocks out all the noise like maybe outside noise that's like like cars going by or something but like somebody right beside you like no it's not blocking that i even use a sound machine like sometimes i try and put the sound machine literally on my head like on my ear to block it out and it's still like you can hear someone snoring drives me nuts so yeah travel is really difficult and anytime there's an option for a hotel room where it has two separate rooms we will do that but that's not always available so then I just don't sleep well for those nights um the downfalls of sleep divorce okay obviously you're spending less time together so in our experience I go up to bed a lot earlier because I want to spend time before I fall asleep to read that is a priority for me I really enjoy that time of day it's like wind down turn off my brain um, before I go to sleep so we're definitely spending less time than if we went up to bed together and fell asleep together like that's guaranteed for sure 
But then also, if that is the case, again, it's like risk reward. What's a priority? I don't want to wait until my husband goes to bed at like 1130. You know, I'm in bed at like 930, 10. So what's more important? Sleep versus that time together before bed? Or can you make up for it in other ways and just make sure that the time that you are spending together is spent connecting, which is something that I really want to work on this year. Um, Like not just like sitting on your phone or watching something like we need to actually prioritize our relationship. Uh, I want to do an episode with Dr. Tracy Dalgleish about that, like tips on how we can prioritize our relationships this year and you know, things that we can do, things that we shouldn't be doing, that kind of stuff. Um, So definitely less time together. And then probably, like I would say, less intimacy. But I also think that less intimacy just comes for most couples during this stage of life where you have kids and you're busy and that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know the answer. If that's a topic that you guys are interested in, like intimacy and um, trying to, how do I put this, make it happen more, uh, let me know. And again, like intimacy does not just mean S-E-X. Like it is all kinds of things like cuddling, like deep conversations, um, spending time together without distractions. Like it's not just what we think it is when we hear that word. So I'm more interested in, to be honest, like the S-E-X is the easy part of it. Like it's like, okay, like let's do it. You know, it doesn't mean that you're, there are some benefits, but you know what I mean? Like to me, it's more important all the other things. Um, And I think with those other things comes the S-E-X, okay? I have a child in the room, guys. So, anywho, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I do have a past episode from a long time ago where I talk about sleeping separately. It's like in the first 50 or 100 episodes, I think. So if you're interested, listen to that. I'll link it in my stories. But yeah, guys, that's it for now. And let's all just hope and pray that tomorrow my life is back to normal. Okay. And I have a little bit of routine. I have two meetings tomorrow. All right. Well, guys, just like I used to say, I hope your children sleep tonight. And I hope tomorrow is not a snow day. Do they ever have like heat days in climates where there's no snow? Like, do you guys ever have something happen where your kids can't go to school? Heat days? Heat wave days? I wish. Anyways, bye.